Carbon dioxide emissions in 2021 are on course to surge by 1.5 billion tonnes. That's the second largest increase ever. The International Energy Agency, in its annual review, says emissions will rise almost 5% this year to 33 billion tonnes. That reverses most of the reductions caused by the pandemic. The key driver is coal. Demand is set to grow by 4.5%. That surpasses the 2019 level and approaches the all-time peak that was reached in 2014. China alone is likely to account for over 50% of that growth in coal. And while demand in the US and EU is rebounding, it will likely remain well below pre-crisis levels. Natural gas and oil are also rebounding, though the latter will likely remain below its 2019 peak, especially as the aviation sector struggles to recover. 2020 was 1.2 degrees Celsius hotter than pre-industrial times. We are getting dangerously close to the 1.5 degrees Celsius limit that was set by the scientific community. We are on the verge of the abyss. The good news from the IEA report is that solar and wind energy are on track for their biggest annual increase in history. Renewables overall will provide 30% of electricity worldwide this year, the biggest share of the energy mix since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Again, China's a key part of this story. It's expected to account for nearly half of the growth in renewable electricity generation, followed by the US, EU and India. Key developments this week, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is preparing to announce deeper carbon cuts, potentially reducing emissions by up to 78% from 1990 levels by 2035. That's according to people familiar with the matter. In the United States, meanwhile, President Biden is convening a climate summit on April 22nd and 23rd. His administration says that bringing world leaders together will be a key milestone on the road to COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland later this year. We uh, only have around 4% of the world's population, but we contribute nearly 15% of global emissions. That makes us the world's second biggest emitter of greenhouse gases. Even if the United States gets to net zero emissions tomorrow, we'll lose the fight against climate change if we can't address the more than 85% of emissions coming from the rest of the world. I'm Mark Davies in London. For more climate stories, visit Bloomberg.com green and follow at QuickTake on Twitter. Thank you.